IMR ready for COVID-19. Fifteen tests negative. As negative. And NCD ramps up for potential outbreak. Infection. This is the National MTV News with Helen Sayer. Good evening and thanks for joining us for Thursday's news. The PNG Institute of Medical Research has received funding and training is underway for staff who will be conducting COVID-19 testing in Port Moresby. A total of one million kina released to ensure the labs in Goroka, Port Moresby and Medang are renovated and testing machines ready for full outbreak testing. So far, a total of 38 tests have been done at the lab in Goroka, while Port Moresby received the same samples for training purposes. Adelaide Sirix Curry with this report. This morning, Deputy Director of PNG IMR, Dr. Moses Laman, accompanying the police minister to confirm that the Port Moresby labs are ready for testing. At the moment, we are planning to start these uh, services in Port Moresby at the UPNG School of Medicine and IMR facility beginning on Monday and Tuesday with the training of staff at CPHL and then uh, with the beginning of uh, work in Port Moresby beginning on Wednesday. His statement comes after MTV inquired if PNG IMR had received the needed funding. As the last time we spoke with PNG IMR Director Professor William Pomat, the Institute needed funding for training, renovation of labs, repairing of testing equipment to Goroka, Port Moresby and Medang to be COVID-19 ready. MTB understands that for COVID-19 preparations, a budget of 45 million kina was passed by NEC. Of that, 23 million kina has been released to the National Department of Health. The 23 million kina is apparently still being held by the Finance Department. I'm following the initial question that 10 million hasn't been drawn down from that funding. 23 million has been issued with warrants and uh, by Treasury down to Finance and we're waiting for it to hit the account. So my job now is to go and kick down doors in Treasury and Finance to find out where that money is and whether it's gone into the actual bank account of the Department of Health that is specified a trust account to deal with this issue. PNG IMR has confirmed they have received one million kina. That funding will be used for training and renovations of their facilities. Adelaide Sirokskari, National, MTV News. Contact tracing of who the positive case had come in contact with is still ongoing. For Hidden Valley employees, the positive case had come in contact with 16 employees. Of the 16, only 15 were put into isolation and able to give samples to be tested at PNG IMR in Goroka. Today, Police Minister Brian Kramer said the 15 samples have come back negative and that Hidden Valley is tracking the one other employee whose sample has not been tested. Meanwhile, contact tracing of 84 passengers on the Singapore flight to Port Moresby and the flight to Ley and Hoskins on the 13th of March is still ongoing. And the OH surveillance systems are on high alert if any passenger begins showing symptoms as the 14-day incubation period lapses. Those tests have uh, been returned as negative. So the 15 um, persons are in direct contact with the index patient that traveled with him uh, from Bololo up to the mine site. Uh, the tests have come back from IMR this morning and confirmed to be all negative, not uh, intermediate, uh, intermediate, not positive, but negative. So at the moment, the other Contact tracing is continuing in, in relation to those that traveled with him on the plane as well as the Singapore flight and as well as the flight from uh, Port Moresby to Leigh. The PNG Institute of Medical Research has also confirmed there is no evidence of locally transmitted COVID-19 cases in Papua New Guinea. On the issue of contact tracing, the government has so far tracked over 6,000 passengers considered high risk out of the 28,000 passengers who flew into PNG since January 28. Meanwhile, all provincial task force teams set up to fight against COVID-19 have commenced awareness and set up community initiatives to practice regular hand washing and social distancing. Tekla Gunga with this report from Morauta House. 
a collective effort is being driven out of here, where all relevant authorities have come together to fight the spread of COVID-19 in Papua New Guinea. As of yesterday, the government anticipates the arrival of 5,000 medical kits. The government is expected to announce testing results of 16 others in Bulolo who had come in contact with the first person who tested positive. I still intend to provide the specific details of all of the 77 passengers plus 7 crew that were on the flight as well as 13 passengers on the domestic flight. Uh, hopefully lunchtime today we re should receive the results from IMR on those 15 that had direct contact with the index patient uh, to confirm their status or whether they test positive or not. Since they had that first contact when he was isolated, the company also isolated them. As efforts against COVID-19, business houses throughout the country are coming forward with initiatives to support their provincial task force teams. In East New Britain, sinks have been set up outside the Tropicana shop in Kokopo district to allow customers to wash their hands. In Port Mosby, the Chinese community have donated face masks to police officers and Brian Bell has installed soap dispensers at the police station. Along the PNG Indonesian border, PNGDF soldiers have commenced awareness on informing locals of the precautionary measures and the 14-day lockdown. Due to fights in West Papua, PNGDF soldiers have been alerted to prohibit the movement of refugees into PNG territory. The briefing on this is part of the operational command and they will be deploying defense personnel to protect our borders. So police uh, mandate lies in domestic with internal borders and defense are to protect our borders. So defense personnel will be deployed uh, down to Daru, Western Province and Vanimo to protect our borders during this time. Thekla Gunga, National MTV News. The National Capital District is preparing at the highest level a possible outbreak of the coronavirus after the 14-day lockdown. NCD has an action plan and has been working with the National Department of Health, World Health Organization and the National COVID-19 Task Force team to ensure their actions fall in line with guaranteed public health and safety. Michelle Steven reports. Uh, media press... Uh NCD Governor Paul Spakop held a media conference this morning, supporting him were two other MPs, John Kapo from Mosby Northeast and Justin Tichenko from Mosby South. Missing was a member from Mosby Northwest, Semeker Murauta. Another prominent figure was Motokoita Chairman Daddy Toka Jr. The leaders and others in attendance all adhered to the preventative measures relating to COVID-19. They all maintained social distancing. Governor Pakop again stressed to city residents some of the measures taken during the Lockdown. So, me like all people blame me, I don't talk. National government or national task force talk or no God in our city, PMV, please. You plus the laws. And by you plus save him, you plus yet, now save him all get alive. Mm -hmm. We want the PMV not to run. That's right. The PMV should not run because the PMV run, it will move people here and there. Inside the PMV too, we cannot maintain social distancing. Police Minister Brian Kramer also mentioned in today's media briefing, should a positive case be identified, public motor vehicles will be issued personal preventative equipment. In case there is a positive case that comes in in a month's time or two weeks, I will be looking at improving um, uh, health and safety protocols for our PMBs. So if there's 25, they'll be reduced to 15 for social distancing and the PMVs will have PPE equipment, that's personal preventive equipment, so they will have the mask, they will have the gloves, the boss crew will have sanitizer, so every customer getting on must wash his hands as we have protocols to get into this building. Now it's going to take time, but once they're in place, then that'll ensure that better public safety for our citizens catching public transport. Governor Pakop also said during the lockdown, people are allowed to walk but have to maintain social distancing and follow the safety guards provided by the World Health Organization. Taxis will be allowed to move around but limited to transporting one person only. The key strategy to overcoming this pandemic and to prevent infection is to stop movement. That's right. Stop yeah. people from moving. Yeah. Yeah. This is what everybody must understand. I cannot emphasize it any more than that. 
we have not come up with a curfew. So the only way that we in the city can help our people from not moving around to increase the risk of infection and infecting others is to keep them at home. PNG may or may not have positive cases of COVID-19 after the state of emergency, but preventative measures are important and should be followed by every Papua New Guinean. The governor said the capital city is ready to respond to COVID-19. The response team is prepared with separate staff to provide support at testing facilities in Port Moresby. There is currently a testing and quarantine facility at the Ritterfield Netball facility. Yesterday, frustrated residents living nearby disrupted the setting up of the COVID-19 testing and quarantine site. However, NCD Provincial Health Authority Incident Manager for COVID-19 Response, Dr. Garino, said citizens should not discriminate. We cannot allow a person that's suspected or person of interest that fits criteria for coronavirus or COVID-19 to go and sit inside the general population with everybody else. We have to separate them from the crowd. Therefore, all the sites uh, that are offering health care must have a fever triage in front to separate sick or potentially coronavirus or COVID-19 patients from the crowd. So all by sit down outside. You know, can mix now about. Now, you know, something blow coros or pitimol or porret because them stop long way here. Dr. No clarifies that residents living outside of the area will not be affected, taking into consideration public safety and health. Michelle Steven, National MTV News. West Sepik Governor Tony Wawo is urging the government to send police and PNG Defence Force reinforcements to the PNG Indonesia border. Governor Wawo says currently the border is seeing increasing cases of illegal border crosses. He made these comments following a rise in COVID-19 cases in the Jayapura province of Indonesia. Concern about our international borders. Speaking to MTV News, the West Sepik governor says there are more reports of illegal border crossing between PNG and Indonesia. He says despite efforts to close the seven border entry points, people are moving in and out despite the state of emergency lockdown. Governor Wowo says the border poses threats. We are requesting for the defense force to go down and help us to, because we are now down with the manpower. In fact, we have only 78 policemen in the province, but they cannot be able to do a whole lot of jobs. So, requesting for the government to give us the manpower, mainly different force and police to, for us to you know, secure our, border, our borders. Speaking this morning during the media briefing by the state, the police minister says operation plans are being finalized. Kramer says police and defense force personnel will be deployed to both West Sipik and Western province. So police uh, mandate lies in domestic with internal borders and defense are uh, to protect our borders. So defense personnel will be deployed uh, down to Daru, Western Province and Vanimo to protect our borders during this time. So right now we're just putting, f finalizing the operational uh, commands for them. Um, so when they're deployed, one is they're fully equipped and resourced to be able to monitor those borders. Meanwhile, the West Sipi governor has announced a 3 million funding through the provincial government and its open MPs. The Intergovernment Relations Department has also assisted West Sipik with 100,000. Governor Wowo says this will go towards efforts in combating the COVID-19 threat and equip frontline workers. Put on 1 million kina for the coronavirus and uh, the other 46 have put on 500,000, it's a total of 3 million kina. We are now putting a budget, budget for 3 million kina to fight the disease. Recently, East Sipik Governor Alan Bird urged communities in both West and East Sipik to stop trading of vanilla, gold and other commodities. Governor Bird says the threat is real and appealed to people to follow government directions. We can't mend the entire border, obviously. Uh, you can't expect, uh, we can't put patrol boats on the, on the sea border. So we have to figure out a way of managing our people. Jack LaPava Jr., National MTV News. You're watching National MTV News. Parliament will be recalled next week and Medang residents concerned about the lack of services in the province due to the nationwide lockdown. Details when we come back.
James Marape says Parliament will be recalled next Thursday to introduce and pass a proposed emergency defence bill as well as National Economic Intervention Programme. The National Intervention Programme will look at the 2020 budget and the delaying of non-essential activities including the Census 2020. Prime Minister James Marape also stating he had met with commercial banks and super funds and they have given indication for three months stop on loans and the super funds to assist people who have have been laid off from work. Marape also confirmed the 15 sample test results from Hidden Valley employee have a comeback negative. To all that Parliament will be recalled on the 2nd of April uh, for us to uh, basically uh, give effect to the meaning of a state of emergency as approved under section 228 of our constitution. So Parliament will basically be recalled and uh, two proposed bills that will be brought before Parliament will be a proposed emergency general provisions bill uh, as well as a proposed emergency defence uh, bill that uh, in that Parliament uh, we will basically pass to ensure we've secured our country from uh, the necessary legal instruments uh, to ensure we are in legal compliance and to ensure we do the right thing going forward. And as most of you would have uh, known by now, the state of emergency that we're proposing is not necessarily a state of emergency that is meant for almost every other uh, needs in our country. It's more specifically geared towards ensuring that in the 14-day period, we map out exactly where is the presence of coronavirus in our country, if there is any presence, and for us to ensure we put in place a mitigation strategy to contain spread of corona and to ensure we eliminate corona from our presence in PNG. Malahang Health Centre in Leh has scaled down on its operations during the 14-day lockdown in the city. Sister in charge Daisy Basak said like other clinics in the city, the health centre will only be attending to sick patients. Apart from the outpatient, other sections have stopped operating. Sister Basak is appealing to the people in the catchment areas of Malahang Centre and Mambu to stay at home to avoid sicknesses and accidents during this time. Normal operations will resume after the 14-day lockdown period. Shipping agencies and fuel distributors in Medang are concerned that the lockdown will affect the delivery of essential services. The agencies, including Puma Energy, met and drafted a letter outlining their concerns to present to the Provincial Executive Council. PNG Port's business manager in Medang says if the wharf and shops are closed, Medang will have a problem with the delivery of essential services, including fuel discharge. Uh, the shipping agencies, including fuel distributes of Puma Energy, met and put up a letter to bring up with the Medang Provincial Administration. They are asking the Provincial Administration to reconsider its decision to shut down all essential businesses in the province, including the wharf. If they can reconsider the decision on shutting down all the essential businesses um, in the province, including the wharf and all that, they should at least have a... Um, is down on that and allow for the uh, maintenance of supplies, businesses, houses to operate, as well as the work to operate, so that the people of Medang will have the supplies and the needs they want. Puma Energy in Medang is also ready to supply fuel to all business houses and anyone who needs fuel in the province. However, they are also concerned about the impacts the shutdown of essential services in the province will have to the community. Um, the issue now is uh, if the wharf and all the shops are closed, then we will have a problem with the essential supplies. Uh, we are very mindful about the services, the essential services that will provide to the business communities and the uh, general public in Medang. Medang Terminal Manager Nathaniel Mogan says they are also aware of the important services like hospitals, ambulances, police and even PNG Power. These services will need fuel to operate for the next 14 days. Uh, the impacts that this will bring to the communities, uh, some of the essential services like uh, you know, the hospitals, uh, ambulance, uh, uh, running here and there, you know, they need fuel. Uh, PNG Power, for instance, they, need, they take fuel from us to uh, line, uh, run electricity in the province. And um, also if you look at um, 
you know, uh, police vehicles going up and down, monitoring situations, they will need fuel. Morgan says for now they are uncertain as whether they will continue to provide those essential services or not. Puma Energy has enough fuel to supply for a number of days and is looking to get more fuel supply early next week with one of its fuel tankers. However, if the lockdown continues, it will affect the fuel supply in Medang. And uh, because the decision is made to stop any vessels from coming uh, into the province, uh, this will have a greater impact because uh, eventually we're going to run out of uh, uh, fuel. Masa Luis, National MTV News, Medang. Meanwhile, the Chinese community in Medang donated food rations worth 10,000 kina to police to support them in their efforts to contain a possible COVID-19 outbreak. Provincial Police Commander Acting Superintendent Manzuk Rubian thanked the Chinese community for their support towards the local police. PPC Manju Rubian officially received these food rations from the Chinese community. Rubian told the Chinese community their support will help his men and women for the next 14 day operation. Another Asian businessman has also donated safety vests, tents, solar lights, chairs, and other personal protection equipment to the COVID 19 response team for Medang. The team was pleased to get donations from business houses who are willing to work with them in fighting against this global pandemic. Telecomedian has also donated two Gemtech modems or telephones to the response team. The Gemtech mobiles come with unlimited on-net calls, 100 minutes of net calls as well as Wi-Fi connections. People can also call 434-0130 for assistance if they suspect a COVID-19 case. Uh, with respect to our COVID-19 operations, we would like to thank uh, Medan Telecom Office, uh, Matthew Passingani and his team for donating uh, two telephones, which would serve the purpose for Wi-Fi and also calls in terms of uh, the response that we have here. So, thank you very much. Masa Luis, National and TV News, Medan. In other news, community leaders in Gagidu Station in Finchhafen have to deal with juvenile cases because the prison does not have a juvenile cell. Officer in charge Jerry Gaudakuku said the prison needs a cell block to curb the growing number of juvenile cases. For now, juvenile cases are referred to parents and community leaders to deal with. This is Gagedo Station Prison in Finchofen District. It currently has two cell blocks, a female cell and a male cell. The prison currently does not have a juvenile cell. The officer in charge, Jerry Gao Dakukuk, said he is forced to pass on juvenile cases to parents and community leaders to deal with. The OIC said this arrangement, while helpful, is not convenient as juvenile cases need to be dealt with accordingly. Pani time of juvenile say come, na misa lare mol, igolo Pablo or Ridas na mama papa kano sem so mila gimo sem, blo juvenile mas kama blo ngem metstret. The holding capacity of the prison is 30. The prison, however, holds up to 50 prisoners in some cases, and this is often during the New Year and Christmas period. Male cases are more common than those of females, and common cases at the moment are drug and alcohol related. According to the OIC, there have been several prison breakouts in previous years, but none since he commenced seven years ago. Another concern is the fencing of the prison, which Officer Dakukuk said needs to be higher than at the height it is now. Big plug gate to buy a blue to him. Broke leg leg next up. Nami so sena him rusty me gimna. So me got thinking of him almost weld him can, straight him good can. Before lo some person didn't come up. Shalin Airy, National MTV News, Lay. Several landslides have been experienced along the Kundiawa Gembok to Bundi Road, bordering the Chimbu and Medang provinces in recent weeks due to continuous rainfall. Director of a local community based organization, Vincent Kumura, said this is an important road link because up to 12,000 people from Bundi access services in Gembok using this road. Andrew Ugka, a local driver, said the cutoff roads have made it difficult for people to have the access to basic goods and services 
and is a concern for PMV drivers. At the same time, the Kumura Foundation is preparing to host the Bundi Komba or Bundi Marita Festival from the 20th to the 22nd of April. Mr. Kumura says the events will promote tourism for the Kundiawa Gembok Bundi areas and roads need urgent attention prior to the event. The event, however, will be deferred to a later date due to coronavirus alerts nationwide. Mr. Kumura says, however, that the road needs to be fixed because of the disrupted flow of services into the area and is appealing to the responsible state authorities to fix the road from Gembok to Bundi at the Og landslide. And now looking at the NAS fund market report, the Kina opened unchanged at 0.292 US dollars in the interbank market. At Bank South Pacific, your Kina was buying 0.2845 US dollars, 0.4777 Australian dollars, 0.2537 Euro and 30.97 Japanese yen. Looking at commodity prices at New York close, gold is trading lower, coffee closed higher, cocoa and copper closed lower. Crude oil is trading lower, copper closed lower, while palm oil closed the day low, higher. rather. And on the stock market, the Dow Jones closed at 495.64 points higher, the ASX is trading at 115.2 points higher, and the All Ordinaries is trading at 129.2 points higher. In the news ahead, statistics on the global pandemic and Prince Charles in isolation after testing positive for COVID-19. Details after the break. Welcome back to the news. Turning overseas, Australia now has 207, 2,000 rather, 793 coronavirus cases with three more deaths in Victoria, bringing the death toll to 12. Globally, there are more than 460,000 confirmed cases and over 20,000 deaths. Australia now has 12 deaths and more than 2,700 confirmed cases of COVID-19. The National Cabinet has agreed to significantly expand testing, but under the new guidelines, some people with symptoms still won't be eligible. Flight Centre has announced it will stand down 3,800 workers in Australia. It is one of the many companies doing so as a result of the COVID-19 crisis. Queensland, South Australia and Western Australian schools will become student-free in the coming weeks but will remain open for the children of essential workers. The New South Wales government is blocking all passengers from leaving cruise ships until tough new border protections are put in place. Seven passengers in the Artania cruise ship, which is sitting off Fremantle, have tested positive for coronavirus. The vessel has no Australian passengers or crew. The federal government has lifted its restrictions on hairdressers and barbers, scrapping the rule that haircuts needed to take less than 30 minutes. On to the global front, the death toll has broken through 20,000. The number of confirmed cases will likely hit half a million in the next 24 hours. There will be more deaths in Spain, more now than in China, where more than 700 people in Spain died yesterday alone. And millions of Americans will soon receive checks in the mail after politicians reached a deal on the biggest economic rescue package in U.S. history. The New Zealand Prime Minister has thanked Kiwis for helping day one of the lockdown run smoothly as possible. As expected, the number of infections has jumped again. 78 confirmed new cases, bringing the total to 283. 27 people have recovered, while others in hospital are in stable condition. Dawn on a day like we have never known. This is day one of how we go about uh, responding to level four of the COVID-19 response. The roads largely empty in Auckland, in Wellington and Christchurch. Eerie sights and silence at sports grounds, big stores and bigger malls, transport hubs, parks 
and around our most well-known spots. This is rush hour in Auckland and for anyone who's been to or has lived in our biggest city it's quite a staggering sight. Normally traffic would be crawling along here at this time of day. Today it's pretty quiet and on Auckland's Harbour Bridge normally 170,000 vehicles cross that each and every day but not today. People will be warned people will be challenged. Those challenges were on show today. People being stomped on footpaths and on the road. You need to drive there, you can't go there. Officers even blocking the streets to ask questions. Police say they'll show compassion to anyone breaking the rules and if that doesn't work. Uh, we do have the authority to then detain them. We will prosecute people. But people are allowed out for exercise if they keep their distance, some taking that up today. We're keeping in mind that uh, if we uh, don't keep our distance and uh, uh, watch our hygiene, then we're putting others at risk. Oh, it was a lot quieter, um, a little bit eerie. But what about those staying in? <laughs> We're filming this family from a distance. Look, we're just trying to make the most of it. It's about being a bit patient and tolerant and kind, as Jacinda has said. So we're just, just literally one hour at a time. That's how the Prime Minister's taking it too. Everything, broadly, is running as smoothly as could be expected at this time. Today was the first of many. The hope now that it keeps running smoothly. Britain's next monarch is in quarantine after contracting COVID-19. The palace says Prince Charles is doing well, but tracing the many people he's met recently will be a big task. The shadow of COVID-19, Prince Charles opted for the Indian Namaste greeting, not always remembering the new roles. Now the 71-year-old heir to the throne is self-isolating here at his Balmoral home in Scotland after testing positive. I'm very pleased also that he is very well and, as with many people who have had this virus, has had a mild illness. His wife, the Duchess of Cornwall, tested negative. The couple attended the Commonwealth service with the entire royal family two weeks ago, including the Queen, pictured today phoning rather than meeting the Prime Minister. In a statement, Buckingham Palace said the Queen remains in good health and last saw her son on the morning of March 12th, confirming the Duke of Edinburgh was not with the Queen. But given their ages, 93 and 98 respectively, there will be particular care taken so they are not jeopardised by the virus. But young people are at risk too. At 21 and in good health, Chloe Middleton died after contracting the virus in the UK. Her mum writing on Facebook, to all the people out there that think it's just a virus, please think again. In the last 24 hours, Britain recorded nearly 1,500 new cases. Frontline medics begging people to stick to the lockdown. I'm petrified, but I have to go to work. You have to stay indoors. There is nothing so special out there for you to be going out. But some relief. After the government begged for volunteers to help fight coronavirus, more than half a million people answering the call to arms. We've got 4,000 beds to go in, sorry. Two morgues. This hall is a kilometre long. A builder posting this clip from a London conference centre, set to become the city's biggest hospital for thousands of patients to come. Spain has now recorded more coronavirus deaths than China and close to 50,000 people have fallen ill. More than 2,500 people are in serious critical condition. On a dark day for Spain, a sobering sight. Van after van carrying bodies of virus victims. This is Madrid's biggest ice rink. It's been requisitioned to hold the dead. They need it. There are so many now. Arriving at Spanish hospitals are more and more cases. Infections here leaping every day. And more than 5,000 medical staff have fallen sick too. So part of Spain's urgent efforts are these new rapid testing centres, specifically for those in the front line. Tony Osuna, a nurse, fears she has the virus. A colleague has it. The swabs are invasive, unpleasant handled with extreme care in case they've picked up the pathogen. 
Tony's worry, she has a family she might have infected too. I'm very worried, especially for my family and my patients. At home I stay in one room, isolated, treating myself for my symptoms alone. So the whole of Spain has now mobilised to fight the virus. A tanker load of chemicals arrives at an army base on the edge of Madrid. Inside, they're now making hand sanitizer, gallons and gallons of it, to supply hospitals so great is the demand. What we are doing is very important. We do what we can to try to solve the crisis. So in this battle, it's not bullets this military production line is making, but medicines to replenish stocks that are being used up fast. And this is it, coming off the production line, packs of paracetamol. Spain's military have put down their guns and their weapon of choice in this fight now, packs of pills. And across Spain, people everywhere are getting involved too. Designing and producing the goggles doctors are so short of. Those stuck at home sewing face masks for the elderly. Here, a nurse posts a thank you for the vital protective visor handmade by people living near to her hospital. And that thanks is returned. Every night in every city, town and village across Spain. Acknowledgement of the bravery and sacrifice the medics are making. The sound of a grateful nation. Up next, some sporting updates in Chukai Sports. Don't go away. Chukai Sports. Welcome to Chukai Sports. Breaking self-isolation rules to go joyriding on a golf cart in Sydney has two Wellington Phoenix footballers facing serious sanctions and more. Tim Payne and Oliver Sale were meant to be keeping their heads down before returning home to New Zealand. Instead, Payne now has a court date looming. Red carded again and facing more time on the sidelines. It was the last day before we left to come home and myself and Oliver Sale took a, a golf cart um, for a ride um, in the early hours of the morning. It's that move that's left Phoenix midfielder Tim Payne and goalkeeper Oliver Sale under investigation by Australia football's governing body. The Phoenix team was in self-isolation based at a remote facility, the Sydney Academy of Sport, near Sydney's northern beaches. Payne and Sale went on a late night joyride in an academy golf cart and police found them five kilometres down the road. Yeah, it's one of those things you just wish you could take back and I'm immensely sorry and you could be embarrassed about it. I've let so many people down. It's understood 17 cap all white pain blew positive in a roadside breath test. Reportedly, he's been charged with a blood alcohol offence and will appear before a manly court on June 10. Not only that, both players are facing a fine and suspension. With anything you do in life, there's got to be repercussions, and I 100% fully expect there to be repercussions of those actions. What they are, I don't know, but I'm fully ready to you know, stand up and face them head on. While the Phoenix confirmed the incident and damage, to facility property, management refused one news request for more detailed comment. Payne, on the other hand, broken and remorseful. Chukai Sports continues with more after the break. Stay with us. Chukai Sports. Welcome back to Chukai Sports. Prominent harness racing figure who was one of the first Kiwis to test positive for coronavirus is thankful he's been cleared, while one of his closest friends in the U.S. is still fighting for his life. Self-isolating in his South Auckland office, John Curtin can trace his health scare back to a dinner in New York at the start of the month. The 68-year-old fell ill four days after returning home, around the same time a veteran New York racing figure, John Brennan, died from the coronavirus. 
it wasn't for John Brennan dying, I probably wouldn't have even got tested. No, I wouldn't have got tested. That's a fact. So that's the only, only way we knew, you see. While Curtin was only sick for a day and cleared within 24 hours, it was a very frightening time. Initially, when I got tested, it was like having the plague. Everybody that had been near me for four or five days was thought they were all going to die. So they were all tested too? The whole of all clear now. The local church is all clear. Everybody's back to normal at the moment. Except one of his New York racing friends, power broker Joe Ferraldo, who was at that dinner. The night we were out, he was sneezing that night, and he's still sick fighting for his life right now. He is. The harness racing industry here and in the United States is shut down, putting Curtin's thriving export business on on hold for now. And that ends Shukai Sports. The weather details coming up next. Shukai Sports. Shukai Sports. This weather update is proudly brought to you by Money Plus. With you always. A look at the weather forecast for tonight and tomorrow in the southern region. Cloudy with a few showers and possible thunderstorms in Port Moresby. Partly cloudy with a chance of a few showers in Daru. Rain showers and possible thunderstorms in Karama. Cloudy with a few showers in Alutau and cloudy with thundery showers in Popandita. In the Mombasa region, cloudy with a chance of a shower or two in Leh. Cloudy with chances of a few showers in Medang. A shower or two in Wewak, cloudy with thundery showers in Fanimo. In the New Guinea Islands region, thundery showers in Lorengau and Kaviang, cloudy with rain showers in Kokopo and Rabao, partly cloudy with a shower or two in Kimbe and cloudy with rain showers in Buka. And in the Highlands region, cloudy with rain showers right across the region in Mount Hagen, Goroka, Kundiawa, Mendi and Wabag. Forecast for small crafts for the next 24 hours, waters of southern PNG Indonesian border to Daru to Yule Island to Hood Point and Aroma Coast, seas of 1 to 2 metres. Waters of Samari Island and eastern and western Milnbay Island seas of 1 to 1.5 metres. Waters of East Cape to East Vogel, Cape Vogel rather, to Finchhafen with waters of Finchhafen through Vitiaz and Dampier Straits. To Siasi Island to Long Island including waters of Long Island to Medeng to Bogia to Wewak to Aitape to a northern PNG Indonesian border with waters of Manus and its western group of islands with waters of eastern New Britain, New Ireland and Bougainville including waters of west New Britain, seas of 0.5 to 1.3 metres. A look at the ocean forecast, the PNG areas in the Coral Sea sees slight to moderate with northwest to clockwise winds at 15 to 25 knots. In the Solomon Sea, sees slight with southwest to southeast winds at 10 to 15 knots. In the Bismarck Sea, sees slight with northwesterly winds at 5 to 15 knots. And in the Pacific Ocean, sees slight with east to southeast winds at 10 to 15 knots. This weather update is proudly brought to you by Money Plus. With you always. And that ends National MTV News. Follow us at MTV Online for latest updates on the coronavirus pandemic. There are also daily updates at 9 a.m., 1 p.m. and 3 p.m. from Morauta House. On behalf of the news team, pleasant viewing. Good night.